We teach girls to shrink themselves, to make themselves smaller. We say to girls, you can have ambition, but not too much. So hi, you guys. This is Dr. Gon at home. I'm sitting in my living room slash um, workspace, dining room. And this is my first vlog. Okay, my second try. I think I'm going to edit a couple things together. And I want to talk to you about the interviews that you conducted in the last week or so for the digital anthropological analysis class I'm teaching. There are 19 students, I think it's 18 or 19 students in the class. We have uh, students from Nepal, China, uh, the Caribbean, I'm not sure, I can't remember what island. We have a Dominican uh, American student, recent immigrants, and people who have born, been born and raised in New York City and in other places like me from Rockville, Maryland. Um, the students range in age probably from about 19 to 24. Uh, we have about an equal number of men and women in the class. We don't have any black women other than myself. And there's one black male student. In the background is Alice Smith. The song is called The One from her latest album, She. So I asked you to share with three people that you're taking a course uh, about black girls who twerk. Um, and it's been fascinating how some of you have uh, resisted actually talking to black girls in a class that's about ethnography. So we're learning a lot from the things we do and the things we re resist. Like we're a part of the research we do. We're not abstracted from it. We're also studying how we behave in our human interaction with others. I'm going to share a few things that happened this week in class. Um, I had a guest, Hannah Georges, who is a fabulous vlogger about digital black girls. And she gave us this really amazing quote that I want to start with. Do you guys know about vampires? You know, vampires have no reflections in a mirror. There's this idea that monsters don't have reflections in a mirror. And what I've always thought isn't that monsters don't have reflections in a mirror. It's that if you want to make a human being into a monster, deny them, at the cultural level, any reflection of themselves. And growing up, I felt like a monster in some ways. I didn't see myself reflected at all. I was like, yo, is something wrong with me that the whole society seems to think that people like me don't exist? And part of what inspired me was this deep desire that before I died, I would make a couple of mirrors. That I would make some mirrors so that kids like me might see themselves reflected back and might not feel so monstrous for it. Juno's really great, y'all. Y'all should read, like, side note, you should absolutely read The Brief Wonders Life of Oscar Wilde. That made me think about girls' ecological fitness or the, the fitness of being a digital self a digital self here, talking to my webcam uh, in the privacy of my home, making it public to the audience. Um, there's a certain ecosystem that becomes really apparent from doing digital online work and conversations. In any ecosystem, we kind of think about ecosystems or environments as natural environments as if we're not a part of them. And um, ecosystems can include our living conditions, um, narratives, the things that we do to transact to get what we need in the marketplace, situations and networks. And what's interesting and what I think digital video vlogging gives to us is access to understanding that our biology has not um, changed as fast as this ecosystem I'm talking about. Um, our living conditions, narratives, marketplace, the structure of our body, our need to um, eat, sleep, drink, uh, have a brain that cogitates well because we have enough water, we have enough sleep. That hasn't moved as fast as the technology has. So I'm really interested in one, uh, one of the things behind studying black girls on YouTube is that they're a vulnerable population as um, young girls online. Uh, they play a huge role in watching rap music videos. They often are a top demographic. I was trying to find this quirky uh, FAQ on the YouTube site that says something like, 
uh, why do girls 13 to 17, why are they the top demographic? And the answer on their, you know, legit website was, who knows? Like, yeah, those girls, um, but they're making money off of the traffic of our eyes, of girls' eyes, of women's eyes, of young women's eyes. I know some of the students in the class are questioning why study black girls exclusively. It's so counter to the myths that um, are peddled as facts, I think, in our society. It's somehow diversity means that everybody who's different has to be present with white people instead of everybody learning to be present with different groups of people as a majority in spaces where they are dominant. And I think it's the most incredible kind of intellectual diversity that training that you can get while you're still in the safe place of college. So this mirroring thing and monsters thing is really great. I think we could make a lot of fun vlogs um, and videos, editing, black girls twerking with texts that speak to uh, the lack of representation, with data that we find online, with blogs or blogs by others or by ourselves, and really have fun creating content to learn about what it means to be our digital selves online and to think about the impact of that on some of the most vulnerable demographic populations that are being trafficked, I would say, on YouTube. Um, so if you've watched our Make It Rain YouTube video that we made this summer with my students, you'll know that 44% of the data collection that we have, 168 videos or more, were um, downloaded and uploaded onto male sites and are making money for men, while most of these teenage girls um, probably aren't making a dime. So there's a kind of sex trafficking of their images going on. So that's um, what we're going to be exploring this semester, and I wanted to just get a little sense of doing my first vlog for this semester, and hopefully we'll all be doing 10, and I hope you'll join us and join the conversation with us about watching Black Girls Twerk on YouTube. something that seems to be like black then it's like black people think oh she's embracing our culture so they kind of ride with it and then white people think oh she must be cool she do something black yeah. so it's it's weird but if a black person do a black thing it ain't that popping uh -huh. it ain't it ain't it ain't that yeah <laughs>